Do I have advice yeah, for her? I want the advice. What was our first meeting, Jess? It was on Zoom. It was, it was definitely COVID. on Zoom because it was COVID. So my first meeting with Jess was like, oh, uh, like a wild party. <laughs> and it was all about, do we want to keep dating each other? It was like, we um, we were like being set up on a date and then we were going to like have a conversation of whether or not we're going to keep dating each other. And I don't think you spoke up very much. I remember that you, <laughs> what you said about something Mike worked on and we were like, oh, whoa, yeah. oh, uh, she's bold as she Yes, she I remember. Just said it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't I, even know this one. What is that? Mike was like, Mike was like in love from that point on. Mike has a tendency <laughs> to work on, you know, hard, beautiful stories, but they're ultimately really sad and, and not not for everybody and not always palatable. Okay, Mike Parker, the director. Um, so I was like, Mike, you're really depressing. Like, <laughs> And I think I said it nonchalant because I just watched a bunch of his stuff and I was like, none of it's uplifting. Like nothing that you direct is feel good. Nothing. And I was like, this needs to be a little feel good. And I think that that's where everybody was like, wait, is she in or is she out? Like I gave a like a totally contradictory comment. That's how Jess and I met. Yes. And you're still dating. Oh, we're still dating. And then you and I, Kiara, met on Zoom. Yeah, we met on Zoom. I was I was like, um, hi, I'm Kiara. I really like, remember being like so terrified and you were like so nice. The one thing they all had that I didn't, pedigree. Oh, don't worry, I got you. Uh, don't use a tray. Yeah. To me, right away, saw Kiara, saw there was such a vulnerability about her that was so beautiful to me and like so necessary for this character. But also you could tell there was spunk there, which we needed this character very much to have. And that like she was someone who had fun with life. And that was like another quality we wanted to bring to Tiffany's story. She's in kind of the prime of her life in high school. She should be having fun. She should be allowed to be doing all these things and seeing what befalls her and how it kind of affects her spirit a little bit, dampens her spirit. Well, I think that we talked a little bit about it before we started filming over Zoom and we were just talking about kind of like little bits of like mannerisms and like I did a little bit of vocal coaching and stuff like that to kind of like connect the gap. But the reality is that you're trying to forget everything about me as an adult and kind of, you know, get rid of that part of herself. So I think there's a huge transformation that happens from my perspective. Yeah. But, you know, there's definitely like a through line if we're the same person. <laughs> <laughs> we are the same person. We are the same person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The situation has been obfuscated. There was no obfuscation at Master Mayor. She said no. Is, is that true? Did you say no? I, I don't know. Well, I think that, you know, we've talked a lot about how dark the content is, obviously, and I think that that's super valid, and I think that it's horrifying. The scenes, the subject matter, and the trauma that Ani is experiencing over the course of the film is, I mean, it's terrible. But I was so lucky that I was in such a safe space and a safe environment, and at that point, I felt like I developed a relationship with Jessica and with Mike and Jean and Mila, and I felt like I had people to go to and people to talk to, and I felt like when I was there, and even with the other actors that I was working with, we we all felt so safe and so comfortable with one another. So as it was horrifying, I felt like I was in probably the best hands that I could have been, you know, when we were actually filming the scene. I think it's a really, really important story to tell and I'm really happy that we did it the way that we did it. Ani, don't let Dean run you out of here. Think about all the women you're gonna help by telling your story. You're standing up for them too. All the women will be fine. I think a lot has shifted um, in in how I approached writing that character, both because there was growth that happened in my real life that I think kind of came through in my writing. Also because film is such a collaborative medium in a way that book writing is not. So, you know, you assemble this team and thankfully everyone on it, I completely trust and 
they've been doing this for a long time and they have really good thoughts and ideas. So when someone comes to you and says, this isn't working or I think we should try this, I'm game to do it because I can see that these people have a great record for storytelling. And so I think Ani is much more like a shared character now. Like she's not just my own anymore. We all kind of had a part in creating her. Mila. Don't put dog. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Actually, I think the first time we met in person when I came to your house in Toronto and we had cocktails outside. Yeah. And you just looked at me and you go, this is a real weird one, Jess. That's what you said. And you go, this one's a real weird one. <laughs> and so that was your response to it. You're like, there's just like something really tense about this story. And like, it's different and I love it. But you were like, the ending is not there. And so we talked about why that was, how we could change it, what would be a satisfying character arc for this story. And I think it was really beneficial to have Mila come in at the point she did because I've been on this seven years. Mike Barker, our director, has been on it since 2018. This was a fresh set of eyes that I feel like saw it new and just could bring something maybe that like we were all missing because at a certain point you're like wearing blinders and you don't even realize it. Kiara, how old were you when you started? Uh, I mean, I started doing like theater and things in school when I was like four or five, but I didn't start working professionally until I was like 12. Okay, so I started when I was like nine. Right, let's yeah. call it. So acting when I was nine. I'm, it's been a couple of years. So, but when I- He's 23 now. That's right, Karen. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I didn't have the pressure of social media. Social media is the end of a lot of things in our industry, mystery being one of them, privacy being another. There's so many things that went by the wayside that like, you know, the, there's the good and the bad, and I would say this was the bad. I, at 17, 18, 19, 20, got to go out. I got to live life. I got to be a teenager in, in privacy. I had anonymity. I didn't have a responsibility to, to followers, right? Like, so to speak. It was right at the very tail end and the beginning of like the downfall of everything. So for me to be Kiara, I don't know how they do it. I will tell you, full disclosure, when when younger actresses are cast nowadays, they do look at their social media. They do, and some people will not acknowledge it, but they 100% do. They, they look at your content, they look at what kind of content, they look at how many followers, they look at a lot of things. God forbid at 15 I was responsible for projecting a version of myself. Who knows what it would be? Because when I was 15 I was different than that from 16 to 70. You're constantly figuring yourself out, and now we're expecting these young actors to be in a constant state of perfection or else. And it's a really unfair standard and an, an, an unfair precedent that we're setting forth. So I commend her for being classy and amazing and staying true to who she is and doing all of the things that I, at much older of an age, don't even want to do. I think our careers are very different because I was allowed to be young, and she's not. That's the truth. She at 16 still can't be a 16-year-old to an extent, but there's always a, a, a version of life, I assume, that's like, what if that person posts a photo of me doing this? Like, that didn't exist when we were 16. Yeah. You were allowed to be 16 and allowed to make whatever mistakes. Make mistakes yeah. and be an idiot and all of these things. This is it. This is the beginning. Bye. You're already the prettiest girl in school. Mom, shh. Do I have advice yes, for her? I want the advice. Give me the advice. I'm telling you, I'm not on so I like <laughs> acting advice, I'll talk to you anytime. Career picking projects, I got you, girl. But when it comes to what is now so important, which is your public persona, I don't have advice. I'm super private. I think it's like it's generational. Like I I, I look at debt the same way that I look at social media. <laughs> I do. Yeah, just hear me out on this. I'm kids, ready for this analysis. Kids that are 20, young adults that are 20 now statistically are more likely to have a cash card or a debit card than they are a credit card because they grew up with parents that were in debt because there were the parents to have that for first credit card. They didn't understand the concept of debt and credit. Oh, I see what you're saying. And so yeah. I look at social media the same. She grew up with, yeah. the, with the worst case scenario of social media right. already projected onto her. Yeah. So there's already a version of her that's gonna go into it, so if you're not here, but there's a version of you that's gonna go into it already aware of oh, worst case. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. why I think- No, I get what you're saying. Kiara is yeah. like in the beginning of the betterment. Yeah. yeah. When I sat down to write this essay, the goal was to avenge my reputation. 
Maybe stick it to the people who hurt me. But it's become so much more than that. So much more than me.